The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention The Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Hi, this is Mia Mohsen Zia, also known as Mia No Time for Love. Check out my latest book, Missing, Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People Based Upon a Real-Life Relationship, available in print and ebook formats on Amazon. Do read it. I'm sure you'll love it. It's www.miamohsenzia.com and www.amazon.com slash miamohsenzia. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Sonic Web Studios specializes in custom web design, app development, social networking, search engine optimization, domain registration, email marketing, online stores, and more. Since our birth, we have been designing and developing immaculate websites and providing web solutions which are a cut above the rest. As a leading web designing enterprise, we have a team of extremely talented web designers Designers who are well focused and have the experience of working on multiple web developing platforms such as PHP, Magento, Custom WordPress, and more. Sonic Web Studios has been helping businesses of all kinds, whether big, small, established, or startup, impress their audiences with exemplary web solutions. We don't just create beautiful and functional websites, we give you a complete online solution with the main goal of enhancing your yearly revenues. We aim to give your business the online exposure and brand acknowledgement that will help you in achieving increased conversions leading to profitable sales. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention The Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. It's now time for the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, iTunes, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and the MikeWagnerShow.com. Mike brings you great guests and interesting people from all across the globe. So sit back, relax, and enjoy another great episode of the Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show. Sonic Web Studios, visit our line at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without break your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable, custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show, get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Widener Show can be heard on the MikeWidenerShow.com. You can check our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash the Mike Widener Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, and for 25 podcast platforms, including Amazon, Audible, Apple, and more. Take the Mike Widener Show at the end any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel and follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with a wonderful entertainer and the creator and host of a podcast. And he's also um, an interviewer as well, too. He's from the land of Down Under. He's uh, been traveling 48 countries. He's performed in Las Vegas, Australia, Italy, Germany, Canada, New York City. And um, he's been a feature soloist with many orchestras. And he's also a war winning mascot, won the Capital One National Mascot of the Year, and created and originated um, two professional mascots. And uh, he also has a podcast show as well. And he talks about the ins and outs and um, takes and just his amazing experience. He's been entertained for 16 years. Live, ladies and gentlemen, from the Plus Studio, somewhere in the land of Down Under, ladies and gentlemen, the very super multi talented Dane Reed. Dane, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, Mike, thank you for having me on today. <laughs> oh, it's great to have you on. And, of course, I've never spoken to anybody from the land of Down Under. Makes me want to just hop on and fly <laughs> over the right way to play the 
kangaroos and have a little Vegemite and um, just have a little fun on the Barbie. So that's what makes you want to do that. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm still getting accustomed to the Vegemite, but yeah, my wife is a, my wife is Aussie, so that's why we are down here at the moment for sure. But it's not an easy place to get to right now with COVID and all that. Right, and and of course, you know, I'm sure they'll find ways uh, sooner enough. So you've been a professional inter- entertainer for more than 16 years, and um, mm-hmm. you know, you grew up in Missoula, Montana. You performed in Las Vegas, Boston, New York City, Canada, Australia, Italy, Germany. And do you sit, been in TV radio, feature solos with so many symphony orchestras. I'm sure you got a long list like a King Scroll and um, <laughs> award winning mascot, won the Capital One National Mascot of the Year. And you also have um, a podcast and you also um, travel 48 countries. And basically, you've been in the entertainment business and you just teach people and just giving the ins and outs. And before we get into all that, tell us how I first got started. First, how we got started, right. Well, so most people that come into this industry, they usually start, you know, when they're my daughter's age, three, four years old, right? Start dancing and then just the natural progression of life takes you that way. I am quite different. I am literally your real life glee story slash high school, high school musical story. I didn't start in the performing arts until late into high school. I always played sports in Late into high school, I was concussed out of football. I would have needed elbow surgery if I needed if I were to continue playing baseball. So all of a sudden, I had nothing to do. And all of that happened in only the span of about four months' time. So I went from wow. super busy to nothing going on. And I was bored, right? All I had to do was homework. And that was <laughs> easy. So one of my sister's friends was over one day, and she was a dancer. And she said, hey, we need a guy to help lift some girls in this brand new uh, Christmas show. You want to do it? And I said, well, I've got nothing else going on. Let's do it. So I jumped in. I was very conservative first. I uh, I did hip hop and break dancing and then did that for a little while. But eventually I was like, you know what? I need to figure out how to do this properly. So I put myself into all the different classes, anything that could fit into my schedule. I did it, found out I was pretty good at it, loved doing it. That got me involved with choir in high school. Then it turns out, I can sing. So I kept going down that path. Then I started going to the University of Montana. I had auditioned for the mascot of the school, which is Monty the Bear, and got me a full ride there and started going to school at the University of Montana, performing at all of the different sporting events, traveling all over the Northwest with the mascot and doing different appearances. And then, yeah, like you said, we won the Capital One National Mascot of the Year Award, which is for the best collegiate mascot in the United States. And then I felt like I needed some more. I needed more training. I was really enjoying all of this performance stuff. So I auditioned for a few different schools, got into the Boston Conservatory, went there, got a degree in musical theater, moved to New York, got an agent to the New York thing, jumped on a ship because it was a really great experience to travel the world and work with some really world-class choreographers. And that's where I met my wife. And I never made it back to New York. And we have... (laughs) traveled all over the place and we've performed all over the place in the last seven years vegas has been our home and performed up and down that strip nine different shows loads of other shows outside of the city and now i've got the podcast which has transitioned and it's been really exciting and and of course um you know before we talk about your podcast and some adventures as well too what was that one precise moment that influenced you into what you're doing so what was that one moment that simply said this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. It's like lighting up a light bulb and saying, this is it. Oh, you know, I think it's got to be the first performance I ever did on stage. It was that Christmas show that my sister's friend got me into. Mm-hmm. And, and it was, I mean, I was not good. Let's be honest. You know, it was my first <laughs> proper show, but it was something about, being in the wings, all the lights, the side lighting, having that audience out there. And it was one of those things that just sticks with you because you go out there, you feel that energy of an audience looking at you, applauding, and all the bright lights and the adrenaline that comes with that and how excited excited you are after you're done with the production. I was hooked as soon as I did that. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. (laughs) This is so interesting. And and of course... um... And, of course, you know, getting back to some of the things here, who are some of your favorite artists, singers, and musicians growing up for you? And also actors. Yeah, for sure. So as far as music's concerned, 
Uh, growing up, I was a huge 311 fan. <laughs> I, I was actually just listening to one of their albums ages ago. Love 311. I haven't listened to them except for last week, which was so good to go down memory lane a bit. And then uh, I'm a really huge fan of Josh Groban and Michael Buble, primarily because I can sing their music. That My voice fits that type of music pretty well. So I really enjoy those two artists. Oh, my gosh, that's amazing, too. And we'll talk about um, your, your uh, venture in the entertainment industry in just a minute. But first, listen to The Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable, custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show, get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the MikeWagnerShow.com. You can check our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, over 25 podcast platforms, including Amazon, Audible, Apple, and more. Take the Mike Wagner Show at the end any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel and follow the Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with... Um, Act, actor, pretty much professional entertainer and corporate mascot, um, won the Capital One National Mascot of the Year. And but I, what is in your wallet? Dane Reed here on the Mike Wagner Show. And of course, you've been in the um, entertainment business, you've been the on stage, off stage, behind the scenes, and business and everything. And what are similarities between being an en- entertainer and being an entrepreneur or your traditional business owner? Yeah, you know, there are so many similarities that people simply don't really meld together people don't put the two together people think artists are these crazy right brain people that are very creative and they just go out in the world and live this crazy life and then there's business which is has its rules and things like this and you have a very different mindset but i think they're actually in reality very similar just like uh traditional businesses or entrepreneurs we have to deal with finding our markets. We have to figure out where we are best needed, where our skill set is best needed, just like a business. You have to figure out, you can't just market whatever your product or service is to the entire world. You have to be very specific about who your customer is and who's going to be buying that product. Same thing as an entertainer. We are the product and the service being sold. So everyone is different. Everyone has their own look, their own skill set, and you have to know where that fits into this industry as a whole. So really being honest with yourself and figuring out where you fit properly is where you're going to find the most success, just like a traditional business. But also, even though as an entertainer, we will work W-2 jobs, we'll work 1099 jobs. And depending on which market you're working in and what kind of work you like to do, you might work a combination of them. The biggest difference between that and, say, a regular employee is that even if we are doing W-2 work our entire lives, we don't get a contract and work for that employer for 10, 20, 30, 40 years. We work for them maybe six months, a year, maybe two years at the most, usually, you know, and then it's on to the next. So throughout our careers, we work for hundreds of different companies or with hundreds of different companies throughout our careers. And because of that, we have to switch our mindset to thinking of ourselves as a business. And we have to deal with our finances, the way we do our taxes, very specifically, falls into a lot of things, the way businesses work. Some of us, depending on the kind of work you need to do, you are going to incorporate, and then you have to learn that whole side of things. So then it really is a business, right? But we also experience so much failure. And we're very... uh, open to putting ourselves in higher risk situations, calculated risk situations, right? But mm-hmm. it's would be considered a risky business to be an entertainer. There are no guarantees, just like being an entrepreneur, just like opening a business. But you have to have the confidence in your product and you have to put it out there and you have to be willing to get shut down a lot before you find any success. Mm-hmm. And, and of course, you talked about the business models. You have your uh, freelance, you have your sole proprietorship, you have your LLC, yep. and maybe you can just explain the difference. And let's say if you decide to uh, become um, a mascot and you reach out to all these schools and let's say, you know, you know, you know, Dane the mascot performing at um, 
wherever. It's like, what would you set your business model as? For example, would you be a freelancer? Would you be sole proprietor? Or would you be LLC? And so what, what's the difference between the three? Yeah, so I it really depends, I think, on the volume of the work that you are working in that particular field. So when you are getting contracts for gigs, so you will audition for things or you submit for different jobs or gigs and you'll get cast, right? And depending on how the production company works or the agency that's hiring you works, you will either be a W-2 employee, which is then very cut and dry and easy, just, you know, very simple. And other times you will be given 1099s, right? But depending on how you structure that on your back end for your tax filing purposes and your business purposes really comes down to the volume of work that you're doing as uh, someone who's receiving a lot of 1099 contracts. So if someone is brand new to in a market, let's say you go to Las Vegas and you get cast in a show, you're doing that show, and then you're picking up some gigs here and there on the side, you know, maybe one a week, one every couple weeks, just a little bit of supplemental income, and it's all 1099 work, you're not going to get a lot of benefit from incorporating because you're not making enough money as a as a 1099 uh, contract worker to justify the expenses and the other benefits of being incorporated. But if you're finding that the majority of your income is uh, becoming from 1099 work, then you absolutely want to incorporate and become an LLC. And if you're making even more and it's more regular and you can actually predict it a bit more and it's a bit more consistent, then you're going to want to file for an S-Corp filing as well uh, on that L LLC just because it opens up uh, more possibility for tax deductions and so you can hold on to more of your money because uh, with the newer tax laws that came in, working simply as a 1099 worker, as a sole proprietor is very highly taxed. There are almost no write-offs uh, as compared to a handful of years ago. So you really only get the tax advantages if you can incorporate and go that that route. The catch is, of course, that you need to be making the volume of money to justify that. And it's not like sixty thousand dollars a year or something like this. It's you know if you're making fifteen, twenty, something like that, then it's it's certainly worth doing the LLC and maybe even the S corp. Mm -hmm. and, and what is the minimum um, that you have to make in order to where you have to file taxes? Because some states require three hundred dollars, some four hundred, some five hundred a year or so, some six or seven hundred. And what would you say um, on average? How much do you have to make before you have to start filing for taxes? Ooh, I guess I've never really thought about that because I guess I've already I've, I guess I've made past the threshold. The thing is, because we work for so many different people. Uh, Employers, at least in the state of Nevada, and I because it's all federal tax law, it would be six hundred dollars. So if a company pays you six hundred dollars, then they are required to give you a ten ninety nine, and then you have to claim that as income uh, with the IRS. So if you make less than that, if you if you worked one job for one person in the year and it was a hundred dollars, you don't really have to claim that. It depends on how you want to do your book work. That is a decision you can make for your own conscience. But um, it's the $600 mark. So what will happen is you'll work for loads of different companies. And at the end of the year, I have like a stack of 1099s from, not 1099s, from, of W9s from, no, W9s, 10, from 1099s from all the different people that I have worked for. And then you got to go through, you got to sort it out, organize it, and then make it part of your packet that you hand to your accountant. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, speaking of finances and everything and, um, you, you know, how the finances impact the um, the artist's work and everything else. And um, what advice do you have for um, artists, you know, trying to uh, make it work uh, financially where it's say, you know, you know, get them say that um, that I, I'm trying to explain this, that, you know, how to make it feasible, how to make it work and finances and everything. And what's like the one best advice you can give to anybody out there? you know, trying to make it work and balancing the finances. So that's what we're trying to get at here. Yeah, I would say. So as you're going through your career, you may have some gigs and jobs that are really well paid. Don't spend based on what you're making in whatever that job is, because it is guaranteed that that job, whatever it is, even if it's a long-term contract, it's going to end. And that nice paycheck is going to go away at some point. So never spend in the present, spend in, create a budget, create something that 
is a little bit more frugal so that you know that you can sustain yourself, that you always have a bit of a buffer of cash so you can live off of this. This is just the reality of being an entertainer. You're going to need to have to build that. And it's not something that happens right away, for sure. It takes time. But know that you need to keep working that way. Um, also, I would say to... Ah, I would say pay off your debt if you have it, <laughs> you know, try not to go, try not to get into, get carried away with credit cards and things like that. Credit cards can be amazing tools. I love credit cards because of all the extra insurances that come with it. I don't like spending uh, my money uh, and straight away at different point of sale places because I've had multiple cases of my card number being stolen. And then it's a very simple phone call to the credit card company and the issue is resolved. So I would say spend on a credit card and then Make sure you pay it off in full every single month. Um, but try to stay on top of your finances and be very aware of where your money is going. Mm -hmm. And that's very important, too. If you had to start your career from scratch but still have the knowledge and experience you collected from your career in the entertainment industry, being a mascot, singing symphonies, and a lot more, what would you do or not do differently or do the same? Yeah, great question. I actually ask a very similar question in my podcast to my guest. And it's a conundrum of a question, isn't it? Because, of course, I am where I am today because of all the good and bad decisions that I've made throughout my life. But it's fun to go down the rabbit hole. And I would say I would not change a whole lot, but I, what I really would change what I would is I would be more present in the moment as I was going through and enjoying the journey more because it's very easy in this career and I think in any career in life to very much future pace ourselves and think of what's next what's life going to be like life is going to be so much better when I have this or that or I get this uh, credit or this peak in my career happens that's not really what it's about because I've hit the peaks I've hit I've gotten those uh, great resume lines you know and the fact is, once you get to them and you hit them, you go, okay, great, I did it. And I'm not taking away from how great it is to have achieved whatever it is you sought out to achieve. But once it happens, that moment happens, you realize it happened, and you look around, you go, great, I did it. Now what? Mm. And you have to go back. And what you end up just defaulting to is going back to the work that it took to get to that point. So it, it's really about the journey and being present in the journey and enjoying the entire process because i think that's the success part of any industry uh especially with the entertainment industry that it's all about the journey and enjoy that and to try try to be as present as possible in the moment as you're going through your career yes you need to look to the future and know where you're going you have to have a direction for sure but don't live there and don't think mm -hmm. something's going to be amazing and life is going to be this amazing white picket fence once you get there because you're going to get there and you go, OK, now what? I, I, I was just going to say that it's like um, it makes you think of Roadrunner, you know, being caught by a Willie Coyote after what, 20 some years, you know, Willie Coyote, Cody grabs Roadrunner by the neck goes, OK, I have them. Now, what do I do with them? <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. Oh my goodness! And of course, you, of course, we're gonna say something too. I notice you're raising your hands. It's like you know, teacher, teacher. <laughs> no, it's just me hanging out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know something? I, I have a really interesting story about about my journalism teacher. I have rarely told this on the air that when I was going to school, and if you had to ask a question or say something, and you raise your hand, you get, and he says, "Go ahead, Mr. So and So." You have to raise your hand, and so out of courtesy, I just go like this. Just very quickly, uh, and he still picked it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! You know, just make great ways to get a little bit of attention. And of course, yeah. uh, you talked about the podcast early. You booked it, and yes, we will talk about it. But first, you listen to the Mike Wagner Show at the Mike Wagner Show dot com, powered by Soundweb Studios. Visit online at soundwebstudios dot com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Soundweb Studios is the answer. Soundweb Studios offers fast, affordable, custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today one eight hundred three zero three three nine six zero. That's one eight hundred three zero three three nine six zero. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios dot com. Mention the Mike Whitener show. Get twenty percent off your first project. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Whitener show. 
can be heard on the Mike Widener Show dot com. You can check our Facebook page at Facebook dot com slash the Mike Widener Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, along with Amazon, Audible, Apple, and more. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel and follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with a professional entertainer and the host of the uh, podcast. You booked it, Dane Reed, here on the Mike Widener Show. We talked about the ins and outs, nuts and bolts of the entertainment business, being on stage, off stage, behind the scenes, and behind the desk of uh, every aspect of entertainment, and puts it all together in a podcast called You Booked It. And uh, tell us more about that. Yeah, absolutely. So You Booked It came about because of my journey. So I went to the Boston Conservatory, which at the time was ranked the number one school in the country for musical theater. Great school. Also came out of that school with $120,000 in student debt. So that's a lot to uh, enter the world in. Uh, So anyway, I get to New York City. And it turns out, after spending all that money getting this amazing training, turns out I had no idea how to actually do anything in about making this career work in this industry. Sure, I had a skill set, but now what do I do with the skill set? How do I network? How do I get the jobs besides someone saying, well, you just go to auditions? There's so much more to that. There's the financial side. There's the personal development side, the mental health side of everything that you need to have a grasp on to make a successful career in this industry. So after having a career, learning loads of things, screwing things up and speaking with loads of my friends, I created first a talk that I go into different arts programs, whether that's a studio, whether that's a college or conservatory program for aspiring entertainment professionals. I go into there and I say, hey, this is these are the things that you need to have to create a successful career in this industry. But as I was doing that and I was creating that talk and I was like, you know, this is a really good talk, but it still doesn't grasp everything because this industry is so big. It's so huge. There's so many different parts of the entertainment industry. Unlike the, like, unlike being, say, a lawyer, our path is much less linear. I mean, being a lawyer is pretty straight on trajectory of how you make it in that career. Now, In the entertainment industry, you can go all over the place. You could be hair and makeup. You could be a stage manager. You could be the performer on stage. You could be dancing, singing. There's so many different things you could possibly be doing. Film, TV, print work, all of it. All of it can be artistically fulfilling, but all of it is very different, but it's all within the same industry. So how do you navigate that? So I thought, hey, I'll just talk to a lot of people from all over the industry who have have had or are currently having very successful careers in the industry. I speak with people that are in the beginning of their careers that have had some great success because they've got wonderful perspective from being young and being in the middle of it right now to people that have had huge seasoned careers that can now have the pleasure of reflecting and looking back on their career. I've had Tony Award winners. I've had Grammy-nominated people on my podcast, Grammy-recognized gentleman who is a songwriter who's on there the other day, Cliff Goldmacher. Great interview. And by doing this, we figure out all of the fundamentals of what it takes to create a successful career because in the podcast, I have a very consistent interview format. I ask the same set of questions to every single guest. So it really becomes about how different people answer the exact same questions. And because of the format, after you listen to a handful, you already know what I'm going to say, but you're interested in what the guest is going to say. And it makes it, because it's consistent, it makes it easier for you to extract that information from the episode and apply it to your life immediately. That's a good point. I was just going to say that because there's too many podcasts out there where the focus is on the host and not on the guest. And you having a set of questions and how they interpret. I mean, each person is totally different. I mean, Dane, I have to say this. You hit the nail right on the head with that answer. That is very impressive. I gotta say that. Thank you. Very impressive. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. And and of course, um you, you also have that podcast and um tell us more about how long have you had the podcast, who you've had on, and uh, where can people uh, find your podcast at? Yeah, absolutely. So the podcast is fairly new. My first episode went live on the 18th of June 2020. So it's a it's a COVID development. 
Uh, but it's been great. I do a new episode seven days a week, and I believe episode 121 or 122 launched today. So there's a lot of content out there. And as far as who I've interviewed, gosh, it is it's a lot of people. And there are every single one, every single one has so much value. It you have to listen to all of them, honestly. But if I had to pick a handful, there is Jose Luis Lopez, great episode. He is a dancer and singer performer on Broadway. He's most known for being in In the Heights, and he was on the Broadway show. He's also in the movie that is coming up. It's going to be released fairly soon. Uh, great interview, amazing insight to how this industry works, how to make it work in this industry. His story about how he booked In the Heights is amazing. Also, I have Dan Michike. He is the music director for Wicked on Broadway, and he's been there for the last six years. He's an amazing human being, amazing musician, also performed as a performer in Chicago on Broadway before he transitioned into being a music director. His episode is out of this world. And then someone I've got, I'm really excited about coming up here is Stephanie Clemens. Now, I've recorded her interview. It's edited. It's queued up, ready to go, but it's not coming out until, I believe, the 1st of November. So make sure you subscribe and check it out. But Stephanie is the associate choreographer and the dance captain for Hamilton, the musical, which I think everyone at this point knows what Hamilton is. It's all over Disney+. Plus. It's, I think, probably the most successful musical that has ever been uh, written or it's going to be. Uh, by the time it ever closes, as if it ever does close on Broadway. And she has been part of Lin-Manuel Miranda, his creative team, since since In the Heights. So she has so much value to have and to, that she gives throughout the entire episode. Definitely want to check that one out when it drops. Definitely will, too. And, of course, uh, one more thing with um, podcast host, also entertainer, and also um, Mr. Mascot, Dane Reed, here on the Mike Wagner Show. What is one thing you wish someone would have told you in the very beginning of your career? I should probably ask myself that question. <laughs> <laughs> That's private, by the way. <laughs> yeah, oh, my gosh. Uh, invest in Bitcoin when you first found out about it. No. <laughs> that would have been a good idea. Bitcoins. <laughs> hey, but, give me the bitcoins, will you? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, my gosh. that really brings it back to the question that I answered earlier. And it would be to live in the present more, and to and to really enjoy things. But, gosh, there are really three things when it comes down, when it boils down to it, what you need to do to create a successful career in this industry. One, you have to. Be good at what you do. You have to do good work. You have to be reliable. You have to have integrity. Be where you're going to be when you say you're going to be there and do good work. Second, you got to be nice to everybody, right? Have to be nice to everybody. This entire industry is based on relationships. I personally have worked in more shows and been on more shows that I got from private auditions or just got given the show basically because of relationships I've built and doing good work. Mm -hmm. And then in the third one, you need to say yes almost every single time. Say yes until saying yes becomes a problem. And then you can start reeling it back and go, oop, I think I'm spreading myself too thin. That's totally cool. But you have to go to that extreme to realize that you've arrived at that extreme. And then you can pull it back and focus in on what you do. But say yes to everything because you never know where – a project is going to go or where a relationship is going to lead. I've had a very diverse career in this industry from performance to production to uh, stage manage management, everything to corporate production, mascotting, all of it. And it's all because I just say yes when things come up. And then I have built an entirely new leg or new stream of connections and networks that all help create this career that I have. That is amazing. And in <clears throat> fact, everybody say yes more often even myself in fact i i feel like dane right now that it's almost like i'm talking to myself the way you're talking it's like i'm talking like this <laughs> oh my gosh this is amazing <laughs> and once again dane reed here on the mike wagner show very big thank you for your time <clears throat> love to have you back on just a couple more things dane here uh who do you consider biggest influence in your career oh the biggest influence in my career would have to be 
Lisa Deer. She was the studio owner um, of the dance studio owner of when I first started dancing. And it was her, it was her that gave me all the opportunity to, to take all of these different dance classes and really pushed me uh, and helped develop me into what I am today as far as performance is concerned. So massive shout out to her. That's a big one. And what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point, Dane? I would say, well, it's a weird time, right? COVID and all this stuff. I would say it's not a brilliant time. Sure, there are a lot of negatives that you can look at if you want to look at, th look at it through that lens. But I would say, look at this gift of time that we've been given. It's unprecedented that we have this ability to slow down in life a little bit and be a bit more introspective because I'm venturing to think that not just entertainers and people in the entertainment industry have been hustling throughout their lives to make money, make ends meet, whatever it might be to achieve that next whatever, that we now have a time to relax a little bit, to figure out what it is that we truly want and to take that time and to move forward with that and then create and then take whatever you learn from being introspective and create what it is that you want to do and be purposeful about what it is that you're doing. Mm -hmm. And that's a very good point. And lastly, what can we expect from you in 2021 and beyond, Dane? Whew. That's a good question. <laughs> I can imagine it's going to be a lot of the podcast and uh, a lot of different speaking engagements coming up. So stay tuned. Definitely will. Once again, creator of the podcast and host, you booked it, Dane Reed here on the Mike Wagner Show, also professional entertainer, also corporate mascot, singer, and more. Dane, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely fantastic. Learned a lot from you. Looking forward to having you again soon. Once again, tell us about your upcoming projects, what's your website, how do people contact you, where can people check out your podcast and more? Absolutely. Mike, thank you for having my, having me on. It's been a real good time. And if you want to come check out the podcast, I really would love that. You can go to youbookedatpodcast.com. From there, you can link out to whatever podcast platform that you listen to your podcasts on. Of course, Apple Podcast, you can find it there. Find me on Instagram at youbookedatpodcast. And look, even if you're not an entertainer, if you know an entertainer, an aspiring entertainer, um, a teacher, a professor, a studio owner, anyone that is involved in the entertainment industry, please share this podcast with them because this podcast has literally become the number one resource for this this amount of expertise on the subject of how to create a successful entertainment career. We have more information because of the sheer number of guests that I have and the diversity of guests. We have more information on how to create a career than university programs, any master class that you could possibly go to. And it's all free. So share it. <laughs> it is integral to their careers and having them succeed in their careers or transition out of whatever it is that they're currently doing in the entertainment industry. So please go to youbookedatpodcast.com, check it out. I'd love to have you. And, and we will do so. And do and you talked about uh, universities and everything. Do YouTube classes count? Do YouTube <laughs> classes? Yeah, of course they do. <laughs> All right. I just had to throw a curveball. <laughs> Once again, Dana, very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely great. Looking forward to having you soon. Do us a favor. Keep us up to date. Love you back on in 2021 and beyond. And don't forget to keep in touch and um, love to come down to Australia and um, have something on the Barbie one day with you. Brilliant. Do it, Mike. <laughs> the Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Sonic Web Studios specializes in custom web design, app development, social networking, search engine optimization, domain registration, email marketing, online stores, and more. Since our birth, we have been designing and developing immaculate websites and providing web solutions which are a cut above the rest. As a leading web designing enterprise, we have a team of extremely talented web designers designers who are well focused and have the experience of working on multiple web developing platforms such as PHP, Magento, custom WordPress and more. Sonic Web Studios has been helping businesses of all kinds whether big, small, established or startup impress their audiences with exemplary web solutions. We don't just create beautiful and functional websites, we give you a complete online solution with the main goal of enhancing your yearly revenues. 
We aim to give your business the online exposure and brand acknowledgement that will help you in achieving increased conversions leading to profitable sales. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention The Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Thanks for listening to The Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and themikewagnershow.com. Please support our program with your donations at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again next time for another great episode of The Mike Wagner Show.